Today we are going to share Salinas cost of living. We spent 10 days there and we spent a lot of time gathering information about what it costs to live in Salinas, Ecuador, and we're going to share it with you in this video. While we were in Salinas, we met with Amy Prisco. She's a real estate agent that focuses on Salinas and the coastal area, and she's an expat from the U.S. and speaks fluent, en or fluent English. Yes, she speaks fluent English, but also Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> she was a huge source of information, huge help. Thank you so much, Amy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she spent almost two hours with us answering all of our long list of questions and provided a whole lot of mm -hmm. information, including how much rents are. And I think we're going to start there because that rent is probably going to be your biggest monthly expense. And the, the amount that you'll spend on a monthly lease, like if you sign a six or a 12 month lease, it, it's going to depend on several different factors. And the biggest one is what, what season you're going to be there. Because if you're only going to be there for right. six months during the low season, that rent is going to be less than if you're there for six months during the high season. And the monthly rate will probably be more if you sign a 12 month lease versus just a six month lease during the low season. So really the amount you pay for rent is going to vary quite a bit depending on the season. Yeah, it does. And, and JP's right because there's a couple holidays you have to consider. There's Christmas and New Year's, mm -hmm. there's Cuenca Days, and then there's Carnival. And during those the holidays, holidays, everything is booked and the prices are like double. Yeah, sometimes more than double the normal rate. Right. So when a owner wants to rent out their place, they're going to take those holidays into account when they rent because they can make so much more during that time. Right. And also there's the three months during high season, which is pr pretty much January, February and March and kind of some of the end of December and the beginning of mm -hmm. April, because that's when all of the coastal towns, that's when all the kids are on their summer break because they, the schools don't have air conditioning, so they don't have to go to school. It'd be too hot. So that's when their summer break is. And a lot of people go there during the high season in Salinas. That's when it's really warm and pretty. And so the rents during that time are higher. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Another factor is where is the condo or the house located? If you want beachfront property, you're going to definitely pay more money than if you get something that's uh, off even just a block off of the beach, mm -hmm. or if you get a house or a little apartment that's further away, like three or four blocks. Mm -hmm. And ocean view is going to cost you more too. You know, you could be on the beach, mm -hmm. but you'd be facing the city right. instead of the ocean. That's going to be less than the, the view of the beach. Of, exactly, mm -hmm. absolutely. And, and then it considers, you have to consider where it is. Are you wanting to stay in Chipipe? Mm -hmm. Well, that beach is the most expensive. Yeah, Chipipe is a really wide beach. It's beautiful, nice waters. Mm -hmm. And so, and the, the condos in that area are a lot nicer and more expensive. Yes. And then there's the Malecon, which is where all the action is. That's where all the restaurants are. And those buildings are a little bit older and that's, it really can be really noisy, so it's going to be a little bit less than Chipipe. Mm -hmm. And then the northeast end of the Salinas Beach area, there's a whole bunch of newer condos, and those are going to be more expensive, probably not as much as Chipipe, but it really, again, depends on you know the building and the view and all of those things. Right, exactly. The type of amenities the building has to offer as mm -hmm. well, you have to factor that in, yeah. how big the place is. Yeah, square feet, number of bedrooms, and the year that the building was built. And whether it's furnished, semi-furnished, or unfurnished. Right. But Amy was telling us that it's really difficult to find anything that's unfurnished. That It is doable, but mm -hmm. because these are all vacation homes, or most of them, they're all going to, or I should say the majority, about 99%, will be furnished. You just pulled that stat right out of your butt. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. We have I no disagree. Idea. We have no idea what the percentage is, but Amy <laughs> did tell us that a lot, almost all of them are furnished. And that's because they do short-term rentals of those properties during the high season and especially on holidays. 99. 99. Mm -hmm. I think it was 98.7. <laughs> See, I can pull out numbers too. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's talk about... Uh, the reasonable housing costs. What can you expect to pay for a rental on a monthly lease in Salinas? Well, if you're looking during the low season, you can expect to pay for a two-bedroom bath, two-bedroom, two-bath. God, why can't I talk? I don't know. She's got her, something on her tongue. Did you get your tongue pierced? Uh -huh. <laughs> two-bedroom, two two two-bath. Bath, condo, 
during the low season, you can find something from as low as 500 to around 1,000 or maybe mm -hmm. 1,200 a month. Yeah. And, and that's, that's for a, a six-month lease. Yeah, a six-month lease during the low season. So if you're going to be going through the high season, you might that might go up. So you might be paying 600 to 1,400 a month right. if you wanted to do a 12-month lease that includes the high season. Yeah, it's hard to say. We didn't have her... Run price the everything exactly and it's, it varies so much you really have to go look and we're going to include include links to amy's information and she has a search feature on her website where you can plug in where you want to live and you know the factors like bedrooms and that kind of stuff and find properties in salinas and along the coast uh, there's also another place what's that called amelia mm -hmm. the other website oh, island estates international island estates international they also have a search feature with lots of properties that you can go search and look at and i'll put links to both of those in the uh, blog post which i'm going to link in the description this video has a long blog post with all of these details written out uh, with the price comparisons and things so i'll put a link to that make sure and go check that out the bottom line is it's going to be more expensive than Cuenca, comparatively mm -hmm. speaking. It is more expensive than Cuenca. And what Amy told us is that if you're extremely budget conscious, Salinas probably isn't the cheapest place you can live in Ecuador. It's probably the most expensive or one of the most expensive places. It is places. more expensive for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the rent's probably 25 to 50% higher than what we would pay in Cuenca. Like mm -hmm. our house here that's 800 a month for rent would probably be at least 1200 a month. That's off if it was off beach. Right. in Salinas. If it was with a beachfront view, it'd probably be 1500 to 2000 a month for this house. So you're looking at spending a lot more on rent. All right, so we also did some shopping. Are we done with rent? Uh, yes. Or do you want to talk more about that? Uh, I think so. I did. We did want to mention the way rental uh, agents work. Oh out yeah, here. we wanted to. I forgot about it's, that. It's confusing and it's different than it is in the U.S. Whether you're renting or buying, Amy recommends that if you are looking for a place, go on her site, go on other people's sites, and send her links to what you like, and then she can contact those people, and she will also vet all of them out before mm -hmm. you're ready to look to make sure it's truly. Yeah. represented properly and it's going to meet your criteria yeah and she'll set the showings and and do and handle all yeah. the paperwork and the legwork and she'll represent you through the process and in exchange for that the the owner of the property will give her a commission for bringing the renter to them right, right. so if you work through her then she'll get that commission and that's how she gets paid exactly all right, so now we're going to talk about cost of food because we ate while we were there. <laughs> we, did. we ate a lot, yes. which is why we came back and went on a diet. Yeah, I've already <laughs> lost a couple pounds in just a week. I think it's just from all the bloat, yeah. from all of the greasy, salty foods. The Mercado in Salinas is quite a bit smaller than the ones we're used to here in Cuenca. It is, but we found everything we wanted and needed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've got all your basic stuff, fruits, vegetables. They've got some household supplies and entertainment usually yeah both times we went in there there was some sort of event going on mm -hmm. so it was quite loud yeah it was very loud in there and it, the prices were pretty much the same and yeah. again i've got price comparisons in the blog post in, if you're curious but we didn't really spend that much more i, I think we spent basically the same the, pretty was, much exactly right. the same so we also went to the super maxi that's in salinas and we did some price comparisons on that too Almost everything is exactly the same price in Salinas as it is in Cuenca. Yep, and we are able to find all the staples that we get here in Cuenca as well. Yep, and we uh, did also stop in the Mi Comisariato Junior that mm -hmm. is in Salinas. It's like a little grocery store, kind of a smaller grocery store that's in, in right off the Malecon, about a block off the Malecon in the middle of town. And the prices there were actually a little bit lower than Supermax. Yeah, I was really impressed by that. It's really convenient and they mm -hmm. still had a nice variety of things. We also were told when we were there that a lot of people there's go to uh, La Libertad. There's a really big Mercado in La Libertad, which is about a 15 minute cab ride away. And so a lot of people go there mm -hmm. once a week or once a month and stock up because they have it's so, so much bigger. And yeah, I, we didn't go, so we no. can't say. Yeah, we can't really say what it was like, but we'll we'll do that on our next trip. Yes. All right, Amelia, let's talk about restaurants. Oh, okay. Well, we've spent a lot of time in restaurants. Yeah. We ate, we ate a lot of Papa's Fritas on the beach. <laughs> yeah, we were, we're bad. bad. <laughs> <laughs> but we also ate at some really good uh, restaurants with good vegan options, so we were happy about that. On the mm. Malecon, it's a lot of steak and seafood. That's pretty much all it is. Like They have a crepes place and a coffee shop, but everything else is basically the but, same yeah, menu. Yeah, it's really similar, and mm. it was definitely priced 
uh, for tourists. Yeah, the Mali Cone pricing was a lot higher than mm-hmm. just if you go even one or two blocks off of the Mali Cone. We noticed that prices were lower. Yeah. Yeah. So and that was interesting. Like they and the drinks too. The few places we went, like mixed drinks, were like nine or ten dollars. Yeah. Didn't you say you saw a margarita somewhere? Nine fifty. Yeah. That's for a expensive. margarita, that's American. It prices. wasn't like one of those big giant fish things. <laughs> no, it was just a regular. <laughs> At least I'm assuming we didn't order one. No, I, I saw some. They oh, were pretty okay. regular size. They weren't giant fish bowls. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so nine fifty is really expensive for a mixed drink in Ecuador. Most mixed drinks are usually in four to six dollar range. But you can find affordable places to eat, and there are places mm-hmm. that have the almuerzo specials, which mm-hmm. are like three to four dollars. So Baki Lunch is one of those places where they have a daily almuerzo, uh, and that includes a soup and then your your entree or and a salad. Salad, rice. So, Yeah, it's a smaller portion, but it was delicious. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a really good lunch spot. And yep. we loved the atmosphere there, too. Oh, yeah, it was so cute. And then there is the Oahu Acai Bar. They have, like, bowls and breakfast and what what all. They had sandwiches, too, I they think. They had sandwiches. So they do, like, smoothie bowls. They had some sandwiches and coffee. They seemed a little more expensive to me. Yeah, it was more expensive than Cuenca. So we got we each got a smoothie bowl while we were there. And they were like anywhere from six fifty to eight fifty for a bowl. And here in Cuenca, when we go to Zatua Miski, her bowls are all four fifty. And I would say they're equivalent. They're they were both they're delicious at both places. Oh, they are both delicious. And Lucy's Mexican Grill. Oh man, yeah, we love that out. place. Yeah. And they have, they have a, a vegetarian section on their menu mm-hmm. that can be veganized. And it, that place was always always had people in it, and yeah, it she delicious. had delicious food. We met Lucy; she was super nice. Mm-hmm. Everybody there was super nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so we ate dinner there several nights, <laughs> and it was always thirty five dollars. That included chips and salsa, two entrees, and we usually had two glasses of wine and two Club Verdes. Mm-hmm. And so all that was thirty five bucks, and it was like I think we ate there three nights, and it was the same price every night. Yep. And that's pretty similar to Cuenca. Yeah. I forgot the pizza place. Mario's yeah. Pizza. That place is delish. Yeah, they have a really delicious vegetarian pizza. And we just had them leave the cheese off. Mm-hmm. And so they have a daily special. And we noticed this at several pizza places in Salinas. It was two mediums for $20. Some, yeah, I think so. Two medium pizzas for $20. And they were good size mediums. They were mediums, big. You know, they yeah. Were, they were good size mediums, but probably what we would consider a large. All right, you're also going to have the health insurance costs like you do in Cuenca. That's not going to vary. I'm going to include the information on that in the blog post, so we're not going to really spend a lot of time talking about it here. So transportation costs, the buses are the same throughout Ecuador. It's 30, right now, it's 31 cents for a fare on a bus, so that doesn't change. The minimum cab fare in Salinas is a buck, but good luck getting anybody to give you a dollar cab fare. None of the cabs turned on the meter when we got in and we so we negotiated the rates right when we got in i would ask right. Ponto Cuesta because we got gringo on the very first one first cab ride not knowing what the minimum fare was he charges 250 for what should have been a one dollar fare well and we're used to cuenca and they always mm-hmm. use the meters but we talked to a couple they said that they never turn the meters on i think that's pretty common in, yeah. in other parts of ecuador all right let's talk about utilities now okay let's start with electricity in cuenca we have to pay our electricity separate. We pay all of our utilities separate for our rental, but there's a lot of places where all your utilities are included. Here in Cuenca. Here in Cuenca, yes. Now in Salinas, Amy told us that that's very rarely the case unless you're doing a short-term stay like a week because of the air conditioners, the electric bill may be higher, so they don't want to include that in the rent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because air conditioning is optional. Mm-hmm. So you can sit there and sweat if you want to and your electric bill will be much lower. That is true. And what we also noticed there is the two places that we stayed at, and I'll link the first one right up there so you can go watch the video mm-hmm. tour of that Airbnb that we stayed in. So most of the places that, the two places that we stayed in, the air conditioners were individual to the room. Right. So each room, like major room had its own air conditioner with its own remote that you can control and close the doors and kind of cool off one room instead of the whole place. It's not central air. Right. So that would make it more manageable, but we don't really know how much, obviously it would cost to run Mm -hmm. an air conditioner because we haven't lived there and experienced that. If somebody out there is watching and has a, a true cost, Please let us know. We would like to know. Yeah. That. How much does it cost to like, if you just run your air conditioner in your bedroom at night, what does that cost right. versus like if you run it all day in your living room? Propane is the next one. Yeah. So the first apartment we stayed in was on demand hot water. So I think that's electric. Yeah, that's electric. Yeah. There was no place to put a propane tank in that apartment. Mm-hmm. And I feel like a lot of the apartments are on either on demand or they just have a centralized 
system for mm -hmm. the propane. So you don't have to worry about buying that yourself. Yeah, we didn't see, we only saw one propane delivery guy and he was riding a bicycle pulling a cart with like five tanks on it. Yeah, it's not like here in Cuenca where the trucks are all over mm -hmm. the place. Yeah, and I think he may have been delivering to restaurants and not, because I only saw him on the Malecon. So I'm not, I'm thinking that most places in Salinas don't have propane. So again, let us know if you yeah, know, please. if you're in Salinas now, let us know in the comments. That would be very helpful. It would. All right, bottled water. Yeah, this is a bummer. You cannot drink the water in Salinas. That is one of the nice things about Cuenca. Yeah. But you can get those big five gallon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to fit it all in the camera though. <laughs> the big bottles. Uh, but you would definitely expect to go through several of those a week. Yeah, we were there for 10 days and we went through about almost three of the big five gallon mm -hmm. bottles. We drink a lot of water though. And we also used it to cook with right. and to make our coffee with. So, you know, you're, it was two bucks a bottle. So that was six bucks, that right? Six bucks for 10 days. So mm -hmm. times three would be, you're looking at what, 20 bucks? No, times four, $24 possibly for water a month. And that's just the bottled water. Then you still have your water bill for washing dishes and laundry and, and all that kind right. of stuff. Right, right. So exactly. you're still going to have a water bill. It may be less though, if you're not using it for drinking and cooking. That's going to be a little bit of an additional expense, most likely from what you're, unless you buy bottled water in Cuenca. Right, <laughs> then, then it'll, it'll be, be the, the same. same. <laughs> Jinx, you owe me a beer. <laughs> all right, internet access. So we talked to one guy who told us that he's paying 40, what did I say, $45 mm -hmm. per month for the same bandwidth that we're paying here and our bill here is 56 a month so it's 11 dollars cheaper he's with netlife and we have punto net here in cuenca so he's paying 11 dollars less for 50 meg a month yeah and we had really good luck with the internet it worked great yeah we had no in issues Salinas. and it works great here in cuenca as well but mm -hmm. yeah, yeah we had no in, issues in both places we stayed it was super fast mm -hmm. and i'll put a link up here to the second place that we stayed so you can watch that video that was a high-end luxury place and we talked to the owner and he said that the condo next door, which is the same size, only it was a three bedroom instead of a two bedroom. He said that rented for $3,500 for the two weeks surrounding Christmas right. and New Year's. So that are gonna give, give you an idea of how expensive it is during the holidays and what a place like that might rent for in a longer term. Yeah, it was really was, nice though. It, it was nice, that was good info. Yeah, it was. It's definitely not in our price range. No, it's not. <laughs> no. So based on some of these additional costs and the additional cost of rent, we think that we, our lifestyle that we live here in Cuenca, and we, if you haven't seen our Cuenca cost of living video, I'll add that link too. We spend about $2,000 a month. We've actually pared that down. I think we're closer mm -hmm. to 1800 yeah. a month now. We've been doing some cost savings. Uh, so that cost of living here at 1800 would probably be about 2500 possibly in Salinas. We're looking at probably a 25 to 30% increase in cost is what we're thinking. You don't agree? I guess I didn't think about it like that, so I didn't realize it would be that high. But it's possible some of the apartments we looked at that we liked were closer to 1200 a month. Yeah. Plus and we have dogs and we'll have to pay. Yeah, we'll have uh, to do a de pet deposit mm -hmm. and sometimes you even have to pay more per month for right. rent when you have pets, especially a big dog. Leisha wouldn't matter, but Daisy gets discriminated against because she's more than, you can't hold her in one hand. Yeah, everybody thinks <laughs> Daisy's a big dog. Yeah, she's at 30 pounds, dog. she's not a big dog. She's bigger on the inside, just like Amelia. <laughs> 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 they both think they're much bigger than they are. <laughs> all right, I think that's all we have for this cost of living video, unless you have anything else. Mm, I'm gonna peruse your notes, JP. That's it, we're done. Oh, wow. I don't have any more notes. I feel like we should keep talking. Well, we can talk about Patreon. Okay. So if you enjoyed this video and our other videos and you would like us to continue making them and make more of them, please consider joining our growing community of expats on Patreon. That really helps us continue to do this. It does. And we provide additional content to we our have, patrons. Yeah, additional content plus a private chat community mm -hmm. with several expats who already live here in Cuenca and in Ecuador. And they're very willing to share information with you and, and share their experiences. Yeah, it's a great supportive yeah. community. And it's a no, it's a hate-free zone too. <laughs> it's <laughs> yes, a positive it community. We don't allow the, the negativity in there that you'll see on some of the Facebook groups. Exactly. Yeah, so we really like we really like our Discord community. It's it's a lot of fun. It and is. And there's always somebody there to answer a question, it seems mm -hmm. like. Yep. Yep. All right, that is all we have for this video. If you enjoyed it, give us a thumbs up. We would really appreciate that. And please share it on the social social feeds and in Facebook groups if anybody's asking for a cost of living in Salinas, Ecuador. 
and we will see you in our next video. Ciao. Ciao.